and welcome to day three of Space Academy Holiday Club. I am so glad to see you again this morning. It's great to have you and especially welcome if it's your first day joining us for Space Academy Holiday Club. It's really great to see you. My name is Claire and I'm so excited that you're all here to join in with our Holiday Club this week. Okay, well shall we start with a bit of a warm-up? Now hopefully you've got used to these warm-ups where at the start we switch the gravity off and we practice our anti-gravity walking. So jump up on your feet and let's have a go at our anti-gravity walking. That's looking good on some of you are getting really good at this now. You're getting really used to the zero gravity that we have in space. Excellent, looking good, very, very good. Okay, well let's switch the gravity back on and we'll do some marching on the spot. And I think today we're gonna up the pace a little bit and we're gonna do some star jumps. So are you ready? Off we go. Very good. That is looking fantastic. Oh, you're doing such a great job. You're really good at star jumps at home. Well done. Okay. So let's do, yesterday we were so good at hopping, so let's have another go at hopping. Hopping on the spot on one foot. And then we'll switch feet. Very, very good. Switch back again, more hopping. And onto the other foot again. That is excellent. Okay, let's do some jogging on the spot. It's Wednesday, so we're gonna be a little bit more energetic today. And so we're gonna reach up to the sky, touch the floor, jump back up, touch the floor, jump back up, touch the floor, jump back up. Very, very good. And we'll finish off with a little bit more marching on the spot. What a brilliant warm up. Well done, everybody. That was great. Well, I hope you're feeling nice and warmed up now because it's time for us to play a game. So, today's game is called Snowballs. And in the gold box today, it doesn't have the bricks in it today, it has some snowballs, which as you can see are made of newspaper. So if you've got some spare newspaper at home, you could join in with this game by scrunching up some balls of newspaper for yourself at home. And then you're also going to need something like a waste paper bin. I have a waste paper bin here. What I'm going to do is put this waste paper bin over to the side here. I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but it is over on the side there. I'm going to come and stand beside the rocket here. And I'm going to see in one minute how many of these snowballs I can throw into the waste paper basket and actually get them to go in the basket. So you can join in at home if you've made yourself some snowballs and you've got a basket to throw them into. Make sure you've got a good distance between you and we're going to put a minute on the clock. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, so I'm going to throw the first one. Oh no, it didn't go far enough. Need to throw it a bit harder this time. Oh, that was too hard. Too hard. That went the other side. Let's see if I can get the third one in. I didn't think about this. I'm not very good at throwing. Oh, yes. Right. Brilliant. I've got my first snowball in. How are you doing? We've got 37 seconds left. Have you got any in yours at home? Are you doing better than me? Oh, that was very close, that one. Let's see how many more we can get. Oh, it's quite difficult this. How are you trying to get home? 15 seconds to go, but I've run out of snowballs, so I'm going to collect some. I didn't go in. Throw them again. Okay. Five, four, three, two. Oh, I didn't do that very well, did I? <laughs> I wasn't watching the clock. Okay, well done. Right, if you were joining in with that game at home, then get hold of your basket, have a little look, see what you've got in there. And we're gonna have a count up. So in mine, I have got one, two, and that's it. <laughs> I didn't do very well at that game, did I? Did you do better than me? Did you get more than two in the basket at home? If you did, very well done. That is absolutely fantastic. 
Right, well, it's time for us to um, have some worship now. So I'm going to hand over to the band. They're going to lead us in some songs. So stand up on your feet at home and we can join in with these songs. There'll be words and actions for you to join in with. So let's sing these together. Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Today I need to teach Curly 
all about how to talk to Miss McIntyre when he's in space. I just hope he's better at concentrating today and not thinking about grass all the time. Good morning! Am I ready to try out the rocket yet? Not quite yet, Curly. You've still got a few more things to learn. More things? I'm not sure I can fit many more things in my little sheepy head. I'm sure you'll be fine. Today we need to teach you how to communicate in space. That's easy. You mean you already know? Yes. You just go, ba to the sheep around you. Unfortunately, that won't work in space, Curly. You know what they say, in space no one can hear you bleat. So do I wave. Shepherds wave to each other and that's a sort of communication. Again? That won't work in space. You'll be too far away. So what will I have to do? You'll have to learn to use the radio so you can talk to us all at Mission Control. Don't be silly. That won't work. I know about radios. They play music. Unless... Do I have to ring a radio station and get them to play a song that tells you what I want you to know? Don't be silly, Curly. That would never work. Oh. In your spaceship, you'll have a radio. And when you press the button on it, you can talk to Mission Control. Like for a little chat? Not for a little chat. To ask us about the mission. Oh, I see. But you need to know how to use the radio. You just told me. I pushed the button on it. I'm not a silly sheep, you know. I know you're not, Curly, but to use the radio properly, there are some things you need to know. More than just pushing the button? Yes. You need to remember that the further you travel into space, the longer it will take for your message to reach us, and for us to reply. And sometimes you won't be able to talk to us at all. You mean when you go home for your tea? No, Curly. There's always someone at Mission Control listening. But sometimes, like if you go behind the moon, we can't hear you. So you'll have to wait until we can talk to you again. And when you're near the moon, it might take three seconds for your message to get to us. That's not too bad. Three seconds isn't too long, even for a sheep. That's true. But if you were to travel all the way to Mars, it would take nearly 14 minutes for your message to reach us. So even if you just said hello, you wouldn't hear our reply for about half an hour. Enough time. To munch a little bit of grass, then. Yes, Curly, you could do that. But what you really need to know is that there's always someone listening and you will get an answer. But sometimes you just need to be patient and wait to hear, OK? I think I've got it. Can you tell me what you've learnt today? That I need to press a button to talk to you and you will reply that it might take a bit of time if I'm a long way away. That I can talk to you unless there's a moon in the way, but once it isn't, I can again, and that you don't play songs on this sort of radio. Yes, that's exactly right, Curly. Well done. And you didn't mention grass at all. Oh, grass. Did I mention I like grass? Try and concentrate, Curly. Can I ask if it's time to eat grass on my radio? Oh, Curly, you were doing so well until you got distracted again. Oh, well, thank you for that, Curly. That's fantastic. I've been so enjoying watching Curly's adventures this week at the Sheepy Space Academy. I'm sure we'll have more from him tomorrow for us to look forward to. Now, at the start of our learning section for today, I've got a little bit of a game for us to play. And this game is called Faster or Slower. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you some pictures on the screen and you have to guess whether you think they go faster or slower than each other. So, to start us off, I've got a picture of an aeroplane. Okay, so that's the first one. And I will tell you that an aeroplane goes at about 580 miles an hour. That's pretty fast, isn't it? So what you need to do is guess whether the next thing I show you goes faster or slower than the aeroplane. So let's see what it is. And it is a pigeon, but not just any pigeon. This 
is a racing pigeon. So a pigeon that flies really fast to get home first uh, from all its friends in the flock. So do you think the racing pigeon goes faster or slower than the aeroplane? Well, well done if you said slower. It does go slower than the aeroplane, but I think it's still pretty quick. So a racing pigeon apparently can get up to 60 miles an hour, which is nearly as fast as you can drive a car on the motorway. So that's pretty fast, isn't it? But still quite a bit slower than the aeroplane. Okay, let's look at the next picture and see if you think it's faster or slower than the pigeon. So the next one is a steam train. And this is a particular steam train. This is the Flying Scotsman, which is known as quite a fast steam train. So how fast do you think the steam train goes? Faster or slower than the pigeon, which was at 60 miles an hour? What do you think for the steam train? Well, well done if you said faster. The train does go faster than the pigeon, but not by much. The Flying Scotsman can get up to 100 miles an hour, which is pretty quick, isn't it? So well done if you said faster for that one. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so this is a picture of some trees in a forest and you can see the sun, the light beams from the sun shining through the trees. And this picture is representing light. So we're looking at the light beams coming through the trees. So light, do you think light goes faster or slower than the train, which was 100 miles an hour? What do you think? Have you got an idea of how fast light travels? Well, I'm sure a lot of you said faster. Well done if you did. Yes, light is a lot faster than the train. So I looked up this online and it said that light travels at 299,792.4 kilometers per second. So I converted that into miles an hour so that we could compare it with the other things a bit more easily. And that works out at 670 million miles per hour. Can you imagine that? that? I can't even sort of fit that into my head. 670 million miles per hour is the speed of light. So definitely faster than the train. I think there's one more for us to have a look at. And we have a killer whale or an orca. Now do you think the killer whale can swim faster or slower than light? Hopefully this is a fairly easy one. Did you say slower? Yes, the killer whale can swim pretty quickly, but nowhere near the speed of light. But killer whales can get up to speeds of about 35 miles an hour, which when you're swimming through the water, I think is pretty good going. That's pretty fast, but much slower than the speed of light, isn't it? So there are lots of things traveling at lots of different speeds. Some things go quickly, some things go slowly. One thing that travels really fast that we didn't have in our pictures is radio waves. I wonder if you've learned about different kinds of waves at school. But radio waves, when they're in space, can travel at the speed of light. They go really fast through space. And it's a good thing too, because radios and radio waves is how astronauts can stay in touch with Earth. It's how they talk to the people on the ground. And that helps them to stay on track with their mission and gives them help if they go wrong. They can call the people on the ground and ask for help. So for astronauts who are in orbit around the Earth, astronauts who are on the International Space Station, the messages between them and the Earth through the radio are almost instant. They travel so quickly that they're almost instant. The furthest that human beings have ever gone away from Earth is to the moon. And when you get to the moon, messages that you send on the radio take three seconds to get back to Earth, which is still pretty quick when we remember that the moon is a quarter of a million miles away from the Earth. 
But you still have to remember that if you're standing on the moon and you want to say hello to Earth, you say hello and you have to wait one, two, three seconds for your message to arrive on Earth. And then they say hello back and you have to wait one, two, three seconds for the message to get back to you on the moon. So that's six seconds all together. So when you're having a conversation with the Earth, if you're on the moon, you have to remember that there's gonna be that delay in the messages you're sending and the replies you hear coming back. Now, the only time that astronauts lose contact with the Earth completely is when they are on the other side of the moon. And that's because the radio waves can't go through the moon. So what they have to do, they have to wait until they come around again to the side of the moon that faces Earth before they can send their message. And it's the only time that the people in mission control can't speak to astronauts out in space. Now, Christians have the best radio system in the world to keep us in touch with our mission control, which is God. And it's called prayer. Prayer is talking and listening to God. And we've had some prayers and some times to spend chatting with God during our holiday club. Perhaps you say prayers at home or at school, perhaps before a meal. There's lots of different ways that we can pray and spend time with God. And just like the astronauts and mission control, we have a constant link with God through prayer. And we can chat to God about anything at all. He always loves to hear from us. We can tell God how we're feeling, what our day's been like, about our favourite film or TV programme, about someone who's upset us or anything else that we want to. And you know, the best thing about our prayer link with God is that it works everywhere, all the time. Even if we were on the far side of the moon when astronauts can't communicate with Earth, we could still communicate with God. Our prayer link with God works everywhere, all the time, even on the other side of the moon. So today, just like the other days in Holiday Club, we're going to have some time to spend chatting and catching with God. And the song that we're going to sing today is about spending time with God. And it says, this is how I fight my battles. So how do we fight our battles as God's followers on his mission? When times come along when we feel scared or upset or angry or worried, we can pray and we can tell God how we're feeling. We can read the Bible like we talked about yesterday and remind ourselves that God cares about us and about how we're feeling all the time. So if you feel maybe like you're fighting a bit of a battle, not a real battle, but perhaps on the inside, perhaps you're feeling worried about something or upset or angry about something, then you might like to use this time to chat with God about that. Perhaps you're feeling really good and happy and excited at the moment, and that's great too, and God loves to hear about that from us as well. So however you're feeling today, let's use this time, just a few minutes, to spend chatting and catching with God. You can join in with the song and sing along, or you can just sit quietly. You might want to grab a piece of paper, do some writing or some drawing about whatever you want to chat with God about. Anything you want to do to spend time with God in the next couple of minutes is absolutely fine.
Okay, so we are going to have our quiz for today now. So if you've got your activity booklet at home, then grab hold of that and find today's page with the space for your answers. Or you can grab yourself a piece of scrap paper and a pencil so you can write your answers down. We're going to have five questions again. Each question, I'll give you three choices for the answer so you can write your answer or just A, B or C. And then we'll go through the answers at the end. So... Let's get started. Here is our first question for today. How long do radio messages take to get from the moon back to the earth? Is it A, three seconds, B, three minutes, or C, three hours? So if you're standing on the moon and you send a radio message to the earth, will it get there in three seconds, three minutes, or three hours? What do you think? Write your answer down. And we'll have a look at the next one. So question number two is, which of these was not in our faster or slower game earlier? So when we looked at all the pictures and worked out which was faster and which was slower, which of these was not in that game? We've got A, light, B, a racing pigeon, and C, a cruise ship. So which one of those did you not see a picture of? Light, a racing pigeon, or a cruise ship? Okay, we'll move on to number three. What does Curly the sheep need to do in order to make the radio in his spacecraft work? Is it A, plug it in, B, press the button, or C, shout really loudly? What do you think? What does Curly need to do? Plug it in, press the button, or shout really loudly? I'll give you a couple of seconds, write your answer down. And we'll move on to question number four. When can God hear our prayers? Is it A, when we're on earth? B, when we're on the far side of the moon? Or C, all the time? What do you think? Can God hear our prayers when we're on earth? or when we're on the far side of the moon, or all the time. You got an answer for that one? Okay, let's look at our last question. What do you call a circle which a spacecraft, satellite, or space station makes around a planet or a moon? So do you remember we talked about the ISS going around the Earth, the International Space Station, is going around the Earth. What do we call it when something goes around a planet or a moon like that? Is it A, an orbit, B, a ring, or C, a loop? Is it an orbit, a ring, or a loop? What do you think? Okay, have you got an answer for each question? Let's go through and have a look at the answers, see how many you got right. So question number one was how long do radio messages take to get from the moon back to the earth? And the answer was A, three seconds. So it takes three seconds for a message to reach the earth and another three seconds for the reply to get back to the moon. Well done if you said A, three seconds. Question two was which of these was not in our faster or slower game? And the answer was C, the cruise ship. We didn't see a picture of a cruise ship in that game, did we? So well done if you remembered that one. Number three. What does Curly the sheep need to do to make the radio in his spacecraft work? And the answer was B. He needs to press the button, doesn't he? Yes, he's got to remember to press the button to make the radio work. Well done if you got that one right. Let's have a look at number four. When can God hear our prayers? The answer for this one was C, all the time. Isn't that fantastic? God can hear our prayers whether we're on the earth or if we were to fly to the far side of the moon or all the way out to the edge of the solar system, God could still hear our prayers. We could still talk and listen with God. Isn't that fantastic? So well done if you put C, all the time. And the last question, 
was what do you call a circle that a spacecraft, a satellite or a space station makes around a planet or a moon? And it was A, an orbit. So something orbits the moon or orbits the Earth, doesn't it? So well done if you got that one right. How many did you get right today? Did you get all five? Oh, very well done if you did. That is absolutely fantastic. Oh, I think we're getting another call to Space Academy. Here's our incoming call. So shall we find out who is ringing Space Academy today? <laughs> Hello. Wow. Oh, it's so good to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us at Space Academy Holiday Club. It's really great to see you. Can you tell us who you are and what you do most of the time? Yep, so my name's Emily and I'm 17, so I go to school. I go to Farlingate and I'm in sixth form studying for my A-levels um, at home at the moment, like probably most of you are. And I'm getting really bored of screens at the moment, actually. So I'm really looking forward to going back to school and seeing all of my friends again. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's great. And I think probably some of our space cadets watching might be thinking about going to Farlingay soon themselves. So that's really interesting. So can you tell us a little bit about what difference following Jesus makes in your life? Yeah, sure. So I said a special prayer when I was 10 in Holiday Club to ask Jesus to be my friend. And since then, it's really nice to know that Jesus is always with you and he knows you inside out. And he loves you exactly who you are. So it's really nice that I don't need to change myself. Um, and a lot of the time when I'm worried or sad, I talk to Jesus and he comforts me and he's always there. It's really, really reassuring to know that he's always beside me, right, like right next to me. Wow, that's amazing. That's so great to hear. Really encouraging. I wonder, do you have a favourite Bible verse or a special verse that you can share with us? I do. So my favourite verse is from John chapter 14, verse 27. And it says it's Jesus talking to his disciples and he says, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Wow, that's a fantastic verse. I really like that verse. That's one that's great to remember, isn't it? Just yeah. in everyday life. That's fantastic. Well, there's one more thing that I would like to know. I think it's very important as a space kidder, and that is what your favourite kind of cake is. Cake is so important. So do you very have important. a favourite cake? <laughs> yes, I do. So my favourite cake is a very, very, very chocolatey chocolate brownie with chocolate chips inside and chocolate icing and Smarties on the top. <laughs> wow, that is very chocolatey. That sounds amazing. I'd like to try some of that too. That sounds incredible. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to come and chat to us at Holiday Club today. It's really nice to see you. And Bye. yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
scream it, oh, I'm gonna shout it. I'm gonna sing it out at the top of my lungs. I'm gonna scream it, oh, I'm gonna shout it. I'm gonna sing it right now. day three at Space Academy Holiday Club. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really hope that you've had a good time. We'll be back again tomorrow and I hope you can join us again then. But let's finish off our session today by saying a prayer. We've been talking about prayer today, so let's finish off with a prayer. And we'll have just a few seconds to get rid of any shapes, any fidgets. And then we'll go one, two, three. Dear God, we thank you for all of the things that we are learning and the fun that we are having at Space Academy Holiday Club this year. We thank you that we can always talk to you, no matter where we are, we can talk to you about anything that we want to, that is concerning us or worrying us or making us happy that we want to tell you about. Thank you that you are always listening and you always care. Help us to remember that as we go through the rest of our day and our week, that no matter what, you're always there to listen to us. Amen. Well, I hope you really enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you can join us again for day four at Space Academy Holiday Club. The video for that will be going live at half past 10 tomorrow morning, so do come and join us again for that. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.